All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to Calvary Missionary Baptist Church's live stream. Uh, of course, this is a transition back to uh, live stream for a couple weeks, and uh, of course, we don't like it. We don't uh, don't like when we can't be in person together, but uh, we know that this is necessary sometimes, and uh, grateful that God gives us the technology to be able to stream and be able to still reach uh, those that tune in each each time, and uh, Grateful the opportunity to stand. I'm not worthy of it, and uh, I, I know I'm not. Uh, I'm not the most eloquent or most uh, uh, knowledgeable preacher or teacher or anything like that. But I'm grateful that God uh, even gives us an opportunity to stand and do something. Uh, I know I, I, I can't go a moment more without saying that God's been good to me. Uh, so much more than I've been to him, and he's been faithful to me so much more than I've been to him. Uh, when Tim texted me and asked me if I could uh, fill in tonight and, and start this off, um, God put this scripture on my heart, Psalms 91, uh, uh, and probably won't be too long of a, uh, a message, but uh, it is a, uh, a scripture that is dear to my heart, and, and I hold fast to it, and I, I, I know others really... Uh, has been has held onto this scripture too, uh, but it talks about a, a secret place. It talks about a, a shadow of the Almighty. It talks about a refuge, a fortress. We're living in uncertain times. We're living in times that bring a lot of fear, a lot of uh, disheartenment and, and, and discouragement. Uh, but I can tell you this much: uh, you can find some encouragement in the Lord, uh, and, and you can find peace in the Lord. Uh, you may not find it in the news, you may not find it in society around you, you may not be able to find it even in your own homes, uh, but if you uh, set yourself aside and go to a, 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 a little bit of a, a hiding place and go to, go to the Lord in one-on-one one on one and just seek Him, uh, I'll, I, I can rest, uh, assure you and let you know that He'll be there, He'll meet you there, He'll be with you there, and He'll bring you uh, that peace, and he'll bring you that uh, comfort that you're seeking. Um, and, we, and we all know the news. We all know the, the, the spike of COVID. We all know uh, the society that we live in. We all know the turmoil that's in our country. Uh, we all know it's all struggles. It's all uh, things that are disheartening right now. Uh, but I encourage you uh, not just to listen to the preacher or not less listen to the pastor, uh, but find your own time. And seek the Lord. And in this day and time, us as so-called Christians need to be seeking him uh, more than we ever have because that's where our true help comes from. Uh, if you're trying to find peace in this world, you're not going to find it. If you're trying to find peace in, in society or technology or social media or anything of those things, uh, you're not going to find peace. You're going to find turmoil. You're going to find struggles. Uh, but I, I, as I said a minute ago, Psalms 91 is a, <clears throat> the scripture that came to heart and came to my mind when Tim asked me to uh, stand tonight. And uh, it really speaks for itself. Uh, I, there's not a lot you have to add to, uh, to be able to bring out the truth in this scripture. You don't have to dig and prod and proke it. It speaks plainly that there's a, a secret place. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I tell you this, I want to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, I know my own abilities and my own strengths and weaknesses, and I tell you, I'm no good. Uh, my abilities is weak at best. Uh, and I can't do things that I'd like to be able to do sometimes. I can't heal a broken heart uh, like God can. I can't mend uh, a friendship like God can. I can't I can't do the things for someone that God can. But, and, and, and it's the same way for me. Somebody can't fix my broken pieces like God can. And, and this is the comfort that we can find in this scripture. If you're uh, finding yourself in a uh, disheartened time, if you're finding yourself uh, struggling with uh, uh, what's, everything going on and, and what's going on in society, I encourage you uh, to seek God greater than you ever have. Put him as the number one priority in your life. But above all things, above uh, TV or uh, above friendships, above family, God should be first. And then everything else should fall in after that. Uh, but I'm afraid, uh, and I'm guilty of this, and, and I can truly say I, I, I'm, 
I've, I've done this and I've put God not first in my life and I've let other things uh, have priority and, and, I, I, and I can look back and see the suffering that I caused myself because of that. So I, I, if this is nothing uh, for nobody else but me, it's a, it's a great help for me. Uh, but I want to read this scripture and, and just bring out a, 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 a scripture or two out of the Bible and then we'll be done. But it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. I won't trust in myself. I won't trust in my own abilities. But in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. So look at that scripture right there. Uh, the, the pestilence that we see in the land today is a noisome one. It's very loud. It's, it's raging in, in, our, in our land today. But he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. The fowler wants to snare you. He wants to, uh, to, to bring you into subjection of, of depression and, and heartbreak and, and, and losing your joy in the Lord. Uh, but God will surely deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh, nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Thou shalt no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Our Heavenly Father, God, we come to you bowing before you. Unworthy to be able to even speak your name, but grateful for the love and the grace that you've shown us. Thankful for your scripture and for your word, Lord, that you uh, give us to lean upon and, and to, to, to learn from and to, uh, to draw wisdom from. Father, we pray, Lord, you'd help us to use this scripture just for a moment uh, to help hearts, uh, to, to, to help my heart, to help hearts that may be watching, uh, to be able to glean and, and lean upon in this time of uncertainty, in this time of uh, trials that, Lord, each family may be facing. We know fa families are facing uh, this uh, pandemic and, and they're fighting this virus, Father, uh, but you, you're not called under wire. You're, you're right there in the midst of them. And, Father, we pray for those that are suffering uh, through this pestilence, through this uh, virus, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would just bring healing, bring your powerful touch in, upon hearts and lives today uh, that is suffering, that is fighting this, that is going through this. And, and for those that are still suffering from it from long-term effects, Father, we pray, uh, Lord, that you give grace and give healing for the, 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 the things that they're facing, Father. Uh, Father, most of all, we pray uh, for the souls of men and women that may be watching this that don't know you, that don't know that secret place, that don't understand the peace uh, that is in Jesus. Uh, we can surely testify that our own selfish wills can bring uh, uh, uncertainty and, 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 and turmoil but if we look to Jesus, we'll find peace, we'll find comfort, we'll find help uh, in a time of need. And Father, we pray, Lord, those that may be seeing this, Lord, that they'll seek you uh, and, and they'll put you above all things in this uncertain time. Uh, for that is where our certainty lies, is, is, is in you. Father, we pray uh, for those traveling, those uh, that may be uh, uh, happening to just to deal with a lot more stuff right now, Father, we pray, Lord, that you give grace and give mercy. Because uh, we know you do. Your word tells us that you do. Father, we pray uh, for your scripture now, Lord, that, that, that it would go, go out and touch the hearts. We know it won't return void. Uh, and Father, we pray you'd forgive us, uh, cleanse us from anything in us 
uh, Lord, that may hinder us from serving you. Uh, remove anything, Lord, that is uh, uh, binding us against serving you like we should. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, open our hearts and minds to your word. And just for a few minutes, let us help us be a, uh, just a mouthpiece for your, for your word and, and for its uh, strength to, to be able to touch hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Going back to verse 1, we see it says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, in Psalms 119, 114, it says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Uh, the reason why we, uh, we can dwell in the secret place of the Most High is because he has offered himself a hiding place for us. Uh, he is the strength that we seek. He is the, the, the grace that we need every day. Uh, I like this verse in Psalms 121, verse 5. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. He is the one that keeps. He is the one that helps. He is the one that holds on. Uh, I tell you this much. I, if it was dependent on me to hold on to God's hand, I'd fail every time. But I know this. God holds and he directs and he leads uh, where I need to be and when I, uh, where, where I need to be. And if we'll be obedient, he'll, he'll provide everything that we need uh, wherever he leads us. Verse 2, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Uh, Psalms 142 says, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he, and he in whom I trust. Uh, I'm thankful that I can lean upon him uh, when I, I can't trust my own uh, thoughts and my own, my own selfish wills. I can lean upon him when I can't trust what the world is saying. I can lean upon him when I can't trust what's going on around me. I can trust in him. You can trust in him tonight. And all you have to do is just seek him uh, above all the distractions, above all the noises, above all the noise and pestilence that it says in verse 3. Because he delivers from the snare of the fowler. He'll deliver from the noise and pestilence. We just have to hide in the secret place of the Most High. We need to seek him uh, when we don't understand uh, what's around us. When we can't figure out what to do and where to turn, we have the place to turn to is in God, is, is in Jesus. Jesus provided the perfect sacrifice for us all so that we didn't have to pay the penalty. We didn't have to pay the price for our sins. And so we have a comforter in the Holy Spirit. We have a help every day if we just let him help us. A lot of times we're so wrapped up in things going on in our hearts and our minds and in our, our lives that we don't let him help us, that we refuse to answer when he nudges and prods us uh, to do something or to say something or call someone or to be a help to someone else. And, and a lot of times we, as Christians, find ourselves struggling or, or, or in in troublesome heart and minds because we didn't obey God. Uh, we, God wants to, to use each and every one of us. A lot of times we, we fail to, to be that obedient servant, and that's why we find ourselves struggling. But all we have to do is go back and seek that secret place of the Most High. Go back to where God uh, will give you grace and give you mercy and, and build you back up. Uh, you have to just turn from... Uh, what you was doing and go back to God. Many people today are struggling with things uh, that the, the, the devil will surely snare you with uh, and it, it may not be no big sin, it may not be alcoholism or, or, or fornication or anything of that, that sort but it may just be uh, a little bit of jealousy, it may just be a little bit of envying. Uh, the devil will use a lot of things to, to snare us. Uh, but it says, verse 3, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. So you can trust and depend upon God to deliver you from the snare. Whatever the snare may be that the devil is trying to throw in your way, go back to that secret place. Go back to that fortress. Go back to that high tower. Uh, as the psalmist wrote, uh, we can trust and we can lean upon the rock. And that rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. We can Trust him because he lived a perfect sinless life. He lived that example for us all. But he didn't just live. He died for each and every one of us. And then he didn't just die. He rose again. 
That's what makes Jesus different. That's what makes Jesus uh, the perfect comfort in our time. He felt the same things that we felt. He knows the struggle that us as humans struggle with. We struggle with a lot of uh, anger. We struggle with jealousy. We struggle with envying. We struggle with a lot of emotional things. Jesus felt that in his flesh. But him being God in flesh, sinned, did not sin. He, he was completely sinless. But he understands exactly what we are and what we face. So that's why you can go right back to that secret place. When you're struggling, when you're hurting, when you don't know what to do or don't know what to say to someone or don't know what to do in a situation, go back to the secret place. Find that secret place. Let him build you back up and give you the grace, give you the understanding, give you the wisdom to go on. Because he will. He'll give you what you, what you need when you, you seek him uh, and, and you trust in him couple questions that come to me when I was studying this uh, is this this question really I guess was the first thing that jumped out to me is are you dwelling in the secret place of God many times us as Christians find ourselves outside of that secret place because we've not made a uh, made time for him we've not given him uh, the time that he deserves uh, we know the Bible speaks about tithing and I heard a, a message that talks about uh, not just tithing your monetary values, but tithing your time. Do we give God even a tenth of our time of a day? Do we really trust that God, well, or do we really give him that 10%, uh, just not even an hour? Do we even give him an hour of our day to consider, or are we so wrapped up and so busy? And, and that's what the devil loves. The devil loves busyness. That's one of the devil's greatest distractions today is busyness. Uh, and because I can ask anybody uh, when we're in, in here, it's, are you busy? Most of us will say, yeah, we've got a busy life. We've got things to do every day. We've got appointments to keep. We've got places to be. But sometimes we need to slow down and stop. And, 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 and I read a devotional about this, is that whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're facing, slow down, turn back to God, go back to that secret place, and let him work on you. Let him reveal in your heart what you need to change, what he, what he can change in you. And then you'll find yourself, I think, in a more joyous and more settled position, a more peaceful position. And we know this world and the society that we live in is a tough, tough place to be in right now. And we, I, I know we all have struggles. We all have things that we're facing that we're having to fight. And us as Christians... We fight so much better when we're together. Whether that's in the church house or not, we can still fight together. We can still call and lean upon one another to be a help and an encouragement. So I encourage each and every one of us uh, to, to, to be that uh, encouragement for someone else. Uh, we, we'll encourage ourselves in the Lord, uh, no matter the uncertainty in society, no matter the uncertainty in our government or in our, our world today, or in the, the plague, or anything that you can name, uh, we can find certainty in God. Jesus Christ made the way that uh, we have access unto God. And, and, and I encourage you to go back to that secret place. Go find that secret place. Another question about this is, why should I, or why should you dwell in the secret place of God? Because he is a refuge and a fortress. 2 Samuel twenty two thirty one 31 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to them, to all them that trust in him. Verse 32, For who is God? Say the Lord. And who is a rock? Save our God. God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. You can trust in God. And even when you can't trust in your own self, when you don't understand uh, what's happening in your life, you can trust God. Nahum 1.7 says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. He knows you. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows what you're facing. He knows the trials that you're fighting. I encourage you to turn back to him. Turn to him before anything else. 
Let him be the help. Let him be uh, the shadow. And he'll truly deliver. He'll, he, he will. Uh, verse 4 in, in Psalms 91 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. What a promise we have from God. Look at this next verse in verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow, arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. You can trust in him because he will cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. We, we can truly trust in Jesus. When you can't trust in nobody else's word, you can trust in Jesus. He said what he was going to do, and he did it. He said he was going to die and to destroy the temple and then rise three days later and build the temple back up. He promised it, and he delivered. And so you can trust him. When you can't trust somebody else's word, you can trust the Lord's. Job 13, verse 15 tells us this, though he, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. He shall also be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him. Psalms 13, 5 says, but I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Psalm 73, 28, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Trust, trust in him. Stay in the secret place for a little while. Don't rush to get out of it. And you'll find the Lord will build you up. He'll, he'll work on your heart. He will give you peace. He will give you help. We can also find that he is a deliverer. Psalms 55, 16 says, As for me, I will call upon God, and the, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, or the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. Psalms 56, 13 says, For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? So you can trust that he'll deliver. You can trust in him uh, for the mercy and the grace. You can trust in his deliverance. You can also, also find that he is a protector. Psalms 34, 7 tells us this. The angel of the Lord acampeth around about them that fear him and to delivereth them. Psalms 125.2 says, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. You can trust that the Lord is never going to leave you, leave you or forsake you. He promised in his, in his word that he won't. He's round about. He encompasses us round about. And he'll be there uh, to deliver to, to, uh, and to give, give you help when you need it. Uh, but he also is that... Uh, safe place that we can stay for a while. We can, we can find refuge from the, the, the battle that we find in ourselves and in this world. Uh, the, the war will continue to rage on. While we have breath, there's always going to be a battle. Us as Christians have a battle within us. It's not just a battle against society, the world, or our government. It's a battle with ourselves. Because your flesh, while it's still alive, it's going to fight you. Uh, the Bible speaks of walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. You cannot do both of them. There is a war raging within you. And if you use the secret place of the Most High, you'll find that God will strengthen your spirit. He'll strengthen your ability to walk in the spirit. But if you walk in the flesh, you won't be in the secret place of the Most High. You won't be in the, under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's where as Christians we need to find ourselves when we're in turmoil, when we're in a good times. That's where we'll find our strength and our help. We can also find, it says in Psalms 18, 27, 
the, he is our salvation. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but wilt, thou, but wilt bring down the high looks. Psalms 145, 18, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cries and will save them. Proverbs 20, 22 says, Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. What a hard, hard scripture to truly apply. Because many times us as Christians, or just us as humans, Love to recompense evil. When somebody does us wrong, when somebody does something or says something against us, our first reaction a lot of times will be to do something evil against them. But God calls us not to do that. That's a hard lesson for us that walk in our flesh. Your flesh will react. But if we're walking in the Spirit, we'll not react, uh, but we'll seek God before we do anything or say anything. So I encourage you to find that secret place, wherever you can find it, whether it's in your car driving to work, whether it's in uh, the evening times uh, before you settle down for bed, whether it's early in the mornings before anybody wakes up. Find your secret place. I like this last scripture. Isaiah 62, 11, Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his works before him. So I, I encourage you to hold on. Because we know the Bible speaks that the Lord is soon coming. And I believe his, soon, his return is soon. So we have a promise that he's going to come back for those that believe and trust in him. So if you're finding yourself struggling, if you're finding yourself uh, in just a, in a hard time right now, think back of this scripture in Psalms 91. Think about the secret place and, and find, find that time for that secret place that you can dwell in uh, the secret place of the Most High and stay there for a little while. Society today says you got to rush and do this and do that, but sometimes we need to stop and slow down and seek God before we do anything or say anything because our flesh will bring us strife. It will bring us trouble, but God will bring us peace. God will give us, uh, and it may not happen in the way we want or the, the how we want it, but God brings uh, promises and he brings, uh, he bring, brings strength and promises and mercy and grace, no matter what we're facing. But we, I love this scripture, and I just can't, I couldn't go, I couldn't do anything else. This is what the Lord directly laid on my heart. Uh, this is just things that I, I believe will help us all if we trust uh, in God. If we are, are a Christian, we can find that if we seek him in that secret place, you'll find that, He'll, he'll bring you some strength. He'll bring you some help. He'll give you some, uh, some deliverance from things that you may be facing. So, if I can encourage you one thing the rest of this week, I encourage you to find that secret place. Go to it. Go to it more than you ever have before. Whether you do it, if you have a good secret place now where you are alone with God, Go, go even more than you have before. That We can never spend too much time with God. The world may say you're, you're foolish. The world may say it's ridiculous to do it. But sometimes uh, the world, uh, whatever it says, it, it, it just can't compare to what the truth is in God. Uh, the, world, well, the world will always ridicule you uh, for trusting in God. And it, it, it only seems to get worse. Uh, I know social media is really bad about it today in time, uh, that you'll find somebody that will stand against you real quick if you stand for God on social media. But I'm telling you, us as Christians, he should be number one because he is the one uh, that has uh, given us the gift that no man could give, no family member can give, no friend can give, uh, but that is eternal life through salvation in his son, Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him today, I encourage you. I encourage you to seek Jesus. 
Seek his word out. Read the word. If you need help, don't be afraid to call. There's someone that will help you get understanding. Uh, and I know this. Uh, a lot of times I don't understand scripture if I stop and seek the Lord and pray for understanding and wisdom. He'll give that to you. And he'll bring revelation to you through the scripture. So I encourage you uh, just to trust in him. Just to seek him above everything. But I'm thankful, I'm grateful uh, for the grace and mercy of God. I'm thankful for the secret place. I'm thankful that I can hide for a little while and just find refuge and find strength and, and, and find that tower and, and, and comfort that I need. Our Heavenly Father, God, we come to you bowing for you, thanking you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Father, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who did uh, what no man could do, what no human uh, in the flesh born uh, on this side could have done. But Jesus walked this earth. He lived a perfect life. He died uh, for every sin that was ever committed and ever will be committed. But he also rose again. And we're, Father, we're thankful for salvation. We're thankful there's a hope of eternal life beyond this wretched veil of tears that we're living in now. We know the struggles. We know the heartache that people are facing. But we know that you're greater than all of that. We know that you're more powerful than any uh, heartache that we find ourselves in. God, we pray, Lord, for those uh, that's struggling this week, that they'll seek you. They'll seek that secret place out and, and fellowship and, and just rest a little while in the secret place of the Most High. Help us to lean upon your word. Help us to lean upon... Uh, on you during this time, Father. And we know that you'll bring us back together. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we ask you again to forgive us of anything and that binds us and keeps us from serving you. We love you and we thank you. We ask these things in Jesus' precious holy name.